Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to this little corner of the internet. Today, we're gonna to be talking about Anki and answering all of these questions. There will be the timestamps down below and you can just jump around as you will. And without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, just before we start, um, for this video, I'm going to assume that you know nothing about Anki and that you are really like a base level beginner, okay? So yeah, let's start with the first question. The first question is, what is Anki? Okay, so basically Anki is a free flashcard software that has built in in the program both space repetition and active recall, which basically these two like things are the monsters of how to learn something effectively. Active recall is basically testing yourself and making sure that you're always actively learning. So reading and rereading and highlighting, all of that is passive and this has been proven not to be very effective. Whereas testing yourself, doing flashcards, writing down, splurting on the paper, everything you know, all of that are active ways of learning. And space repetition is like reviewing different topics that you've learned at different intervals that get progressively longer just to make sure that you're always interfering with the forgetting curve. But the problem with Anki is that it's not very pretty looking, we're gonna be very honest, and it's quite daunting and difficult to use especially if you if you're just first starting, it's a bit like complex. So that's hopefully what I'm trying to be uh, democratized today and share with you how to use Anki um, as a beginner. So as I said, Anki is a flashcard app but the way you do it is that with this program you can make your flashcards, you can review the flashcards and every time you review a flashcard it's not just like you just do it, click on the spacebar and then forget about it. Every time you do it and you have the answer you then have like three or four buttons that say again good, very good or excellent I think and then you just click on which one of those buttons you want and each button is equivalent to a number of days and these number of days will be the amount of days that this card, specific card, will show up again. So let me just illustrate this with an example. So for example, let's say that you're learning anatomy and you're learning the muscles of the forearm and you have you made a flashcard that says, what is the innervation of the flexor carpi radialis muscle? Um, and then you, you think about it and you're like, oh yeah, the nerve that innervates this muscle is the median nerve. And so you click on the, you click on the space bar and the answer says median nerve. If you found this answer to be very easy to find, you might click on the button that says very good. And then that button might underneath might say three days. So the next time you'll see this card appear again will be in three days. Okay, so I hope that this was clear. Um, so that's basically the beauty of Anki is every time you do a flashcard, you actually tell the program when you wanna see that flashcard again. And the thing with Anki is that you have to do it every day. Either you, some people do it every day, every day. Some people do it every day leading up to exams because it is something that if you've put in three days, you have to see it in three days. If not, you're not interrupting the forgetting curve. So that's just something to keep in mind with Anki. Next question is how do you install Anki? Okay, so um, this program, as I said, is free. It's completely free. You can download it from the internet, from the Anki website. I left the description down below. Um, sorry, I left the link down below if you just want to have an easy access to it. Or you can always write on Google um, Anki uh, software download and you'll find the same link. Um, it is compatible with Mac, Windows and Linux. And yeah, so you just download it. Just make sure that you have enough space because it's 142 megabytes, the size of the software. And when you do download and start to install it, you'll, it'll be very, very um, straightforward. But just make sure that you create an Anki web um, account because that is actually the way that, I'll talk about this later on as well, but it is the way that all of your cards are also put on a cloud system just to make sure that you can either retrieve them or you can like save them somewhere. Okay, so the next question is, what add-ons should you install? So if you know anything about Anki, Anki is a very bland, simple software initially. So it has just the bare minimum, the very basics. But the beauty of Anki is that there is an amazing community behind it that is creating, without stopping, a lot of different add-ons. And these add-ons, you can download them from the Anki web websites, we'll talk about that later, and they actually add on uh, really uh, key features to make Anki that much more pleasurable, to use and also make Anki that much more efficient for your learning. And that is like really the beauty of Anki. So now I'm gonna be moving on to talking to you guys about um, what are the different add-ons that you should add to your Anki to make your Anki experience a bit better. These are just the add-ons that I have added to my Anki. I think they're very good. But then again, there's such a plethora of different add-ons available to you that I think you should also do your own research to figure out what are the add-ons that will make your experience the best that it can be for Anki. So the first add-on that I used is called um, the Button Color Good Again add-on. It's a very, very weird name, but it basically makes your um, experience with Anki 
at least the formatting a bit better, a bit more colourful. So let's just go to Anki and I'm going to illustrate what these add-ons do for you. It'll just be so much clearer. So let's say we're having this card here and it says in the SRM, which is like the self-regulatory model, what does the control component mean? So here do you see it's quite bland. It's quite a very bland way to do things. It's not that appealing, it's not that cute but it's very effective. So this add-on, if you click on the space bar, it will um, show you the answer here. It says, so the extent, to, it is the extent to which the patient believes in na na Here, it will actually make these buttons here, again, hard, good, and easy, colorful, because normally they would all be black. And so with this add-on, it makes the again button red, the hard button yellow, the good button green, and the easy button blue. And that actually gives me a visual stimuli that I always, so that I can actually very easily then select which, uh, which, how do I consider this card to be, if I consider it to be a hard card, a good card, or an easy card, depending on how well I knew the answer. And that is what this add-on does, because if you didn't have this add-on, all of these would actually be black. I also went on the Anki web website where, where I downloaded this add-on and it says that you can um, change the code of the this add-on. I don't know how, but you can figure it out if that's something you're interested in. And you can actually customize these colors. So if you don't want the again to be red and you want it to be purple, you can do that basically. To download the color good again button, I forgot what the name of this add-on is, you can just go to the link in the description, I left the link there, or you can paste um, this code here into your settings. We'll talk about how to actually add an add-on later on. Okay, so now moving on to the next add-on. The next add-on is called the edit field during review close, and this add-on is basically allowing you to edit your card while you're reviewing them. So let's say here, the cutoff for significance, there was like um, a massive type you can actually just click here and it will allow you to edit this field as you're, re as you're reviewing it, sorry. So this actually allows you to uh, gain a lot of time because if you couldn't do that, you then go to click on edit and then it would bring you to the editing tab and then you have to do a lot of different things. If you just had this add-on, it's just one click away from you. So that is basically um, what this add-on does. To add on the edit field um, during review close add-on, you can again go to the description. I have, will have the link there or add this code here in your settings. Okay, so moving on to the third add-on, and this add-on is called the Image Occlusion Enhanced Anki 2.1 Alpha. Basically, it's the Image Occlusion add-on, and that is the most powerful one. This one, I can say for sure that you need it. It's an add-on that will allow you to actually have an image, hide parts of the image, and then your flashcard will be to figure out what that hidden part is. So I'm gonna illustrate that for you just after. But basically, if you're learning, for example, the Krebs cycle, and you need to remember all the different steps, you can actually occlude all of them or occlude the key ones that you wanna remember, and then that's a way for you to actually revise. So let's go back into Anki, and actually for this, did the process of photosynthesis, found a photo online, and to actually occlude this, uh, you're gonna to have to click right. So do that and then click, it you click on occlude image. Then this will bring you to the image occlusion enhanced add mode here. And what you can do, it's already clicked on the rectangle here and you can just create rectangles around what you want. So if let's say for photosynthesis, you need, as you said, sunlight, carbon dioxide and water. And these are the only three key things that you want to remember. You can just occlude um, these three things. And then you can decide if you want to add the cards is as in like hide all of the cards and when they will ask you for a card you just have to guess one or if you want to hide one and then guess one i usually always put hide all and guess one because it will allow you to really use the active recall to the maximum potential so you just click that and this will add three cards because you've occluded three different parts of the image so you hide all and it says three cards added so now if we go back to this like deck that i've put it into anatomy but whatever and i study them you can see that this little one that's not yellow anymore and that's um, pink is now what this flashcard is. So I'm searching for what is behind that pink box. And as we knew, it's sunlight. So then that was very easy. So I can put um, three and that is again. Okay, so that is basically how um, you use this add-on. This is a very, very powerful one. You need that one. And again, the, like before, to have this add-on, you can go to the link in the description or paste, uh, I mean, or write this code here into your settings function. And yeah, moving on to the next add-on. The next add-on that we have here today is the mini 
format pack. The mini format pack is basically um, an ability for you to format your cards in a better and easier way because as I said, Anki normal is quite bland. Um, so I can illustrate that for you now. So we're gonna go back into this like deck that I've just created when they had nothing in it and we'll just like use it as the demo one. I'm gonna wanna add a new card and let's say, just like before, what is the nerve of the flexor carpi radialis muscle, okay? And let's say I wanted to highlight the flexor carpi radialis. I can click here and that will highlight it. I can change the color like so. Um, that will change the color. Yep, with this you can also add an equation. You can change the color of the text. So let's say muscle, I want it to be red. You can um, indent it. You can then, you know, uh, indent it more, indent it less. You can um, have it centered, not centered, you know, literally you can do anything. So basically all of this normally was not available to you with Anki Normal. I think Anki Normal stops kind of here, I would like to say, or maybe here. Or say, no, I think I would like to say it kind of stops. There's all of this, so you don't have all of what is behind here. Don't like keep me to it, but basically that's what it does, and it allows you to have a you know more freedom in how you want to make your cards and how pretty you want to make your cards. So that I think, in my opinion, is a very important add-on to have. And again, to have this add-on, you can just go onto the link in the description or um, put this code here and um, into your settings function. Moving on. Moving on to the, another add-on that I have is called the remaining time add-on. And this is not necessarily necessary for an, everybody, but I quite like knowing how much time a deck is going to take me, how much time I'm gonna have to be reviewing that deck until I'm done. So basically this add-on will uh, give you this little line at the top, which will tell you how much time has been passed and spent since you started it, how much time you, are left, how much time is left, sorry, for you to actually get through all of the cards and it gives you the ETA of approximately when you will finish. This is always actualized and updated regarding how fast you go. So like if the first questions are really hard and take a lot of time to do them, it might tell you that it'll take three hours to finish the deck. But if then all of the next questions are quite easy and it's really easy for you and you go much quicker, it will shorten it back to maybe just one hour or 30 minutes or something like that. So don't always be too scared if it's a really big number at first because it's always updating itself, but it gives you a rough guide of how long it will take you to do it. And I quite like having that. So that is this add-on there. Again, to have it in the description or um, this code here to put it into your settings. The second to last add-on that I think is I really like is called the Resize Images and Editor add-on. So what this allows you to do, I have still again here the photo of the photo of the process of photosynthesis. And let's say I wanted to have a little paragraph before that talking about I don't know whatever 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 whatever. And then I feel that this photo here is a bit too big and I want to make it smaller. I don't really know how you would do it without this add-on, but with this add-on what you can do it can you, do you see the little lines around it? That actually says that you can resize your photo in the editor. So you can make it as big or as small as you want. And that for me is really cool because it allows me to not have such a big image that it takes the whole screen. Because sometimes if it takes the whole screen, then when you're reviewing it, you have to scroll up and down and it's just not um, the best. So this just makes the whole process a bit easier. So that is this add-on. Again, to find this add-on, it will be in the description below or this little code here that you can put in the um, settings function in Anki. And then the last add-on that I'm gonna talk about today is an add-on that will actually just make Anki a more profitable experience for this one I don't think it's necessary but I quite like having it it kind of mm, gives you a little planner it kind of keeps you accountable in a way so what this is if it will it's called the review heat map add-on and you can just add it at the bottom here um, when you have it and it will give you kind of like the whole the month so this is February 2021 April May na, 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 na. and every day if you do Anki every day it will have a streak so my longest streak was 34 days that was actually around this time when I was um, revising for my exams and then it color codes with a color palette so I chose the color palette pink because I really really like pink with like a very light pink like so today which is three cards that I have that I've done today whereas when I was at the peak of exams I was maybe doing like a thousand 
1,100 cards a day and that went up to purple. So then that can actually help you keep track of how many cards you're doing every single day and also just is quite satisfactory when you can see that, that you have done cards every day for 34 days in a row. These little as well, um, that are not fully white as this one, like this is like, you can't really say it says no cards. The ones that are a bit shaded, if you go on them, they actually tell you how many cards are due that day. Because as I've mentioned before, Anki is a way that you have, every time you have a card, you've done a card, you say in how many days you want to see it. So obviously, um, some certain days will have a lot of cards that you have to review. And these little shaded things tell you how many cards you actually have to review that day. And that doesn't count the new cards that you have to learn. So for example, here, if you have, you're on this deck, the Pathology and Pharmacology deck, um, I have now that I've stopped actually like reviewing it every day, it built up, but let's say I wanted to do this deck today because I felt like it, which wouldn't happen. Um, you, I would have 1,625 cards to review today from that I've actually already learned before. And then 14 cards to learn today so that's basically what these colors are you can also customize these colors but honestly i don't bother i don't have time to do that but if you want to do that you actually can um i don't know how but you can watch a few videos online to figure it out so yeah again if you want to add the review map you can go to the link in the description below or add this little number here into your settings in anki so yeah i think i've talked about all of the different add-ons that um act for me are important and you can find other add-ons that could be interesting to you on other sources notably uh, one that i have in mind is the anking a YouTube channel. He's like an Anki queen, not queen, he's an Anki king. He knows all about it. He is very, very knowledgeable and talks about all a lot of different add-ons and a lot of different things um, to do with Anki. And that is, for me, he was a very great help for me to understand how Anki works. So if you want to still also look at that, you can also figure out other add-ons that exist on his channel. Um, and then we'll just quickly look at how you actually add add-ons. So you go at the top here on tools, you, there will be the add-ons here. Uh, these are all the ones I use, that, the ones that are the most important I've talked about. And then you click on get add-ons and you put in that code that I always put on the screen every single time. And um, yeah, that is the, you just put it here, you click okay, and then you have to close Anki and open it again to have the add-on added to your Anki. So it's nice and easy, nice and simple. So I think that now that we've talked about all of the different add-ons and a lot of different information, I think it would be a good time for me to do a little pause in this just to say, uh, that if you're enjoying this video, if you're liking the information that you're getting, please, please, please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and share this video with other people that could benefit from it as well, or other people that would want to know how to use Anki, um, and that are beginners as well, because we are all, we were all beginners at some point. So yeah, now that I've finished with that, let's go back to the video. Okay, so now moving on to how do you actually use Anki, we're going to look through how do you make a deck, how do you make a card, how do you make different types of cards, so a basic card, a closed card, how do these both work and how do you can, how can you as well look through your statistics to have a better understanding of you know how many cards you have left to learn in the deck how long it takes and etc so let's get dive into this now and let's create a new deck so how do you create a new deck you just create at the bottom it's written create deck so you just click there and my deck is going to be called a uh, demo and it appears here because it's in alphabetical order so let's say now I want to create um, a sub deck, you know, because I have demo, but then I would want to show you one specific part of a demo. So let's say that now I want to create, what would I want to show you in a demo? So how to make, um, how to make a new card. That would be the other deck that I would want to have. So then to make, to put this deck in this deck, the easiest way to do is click on it and then drag it on it and that will put it here. So you know you can collapse and uncollapse it. So that's how to make a new card. That's how you make a deck. Now how do you make a card? You click on that deck that you want. It says congratulations you finished the deck for now but there's no cards yet. And you click here on add. As well if you, when you click on add you have to as well make sure that the deck that you're adding it into is the right one. Here you see it's not the right one, it's anatomy. I want to be adding it to demo, this one. And then we're gonna be creating a basic card first. So that is the card here. So how you would do this card, you would click on, this would be the, what you would write on the front. Let's say the question is, what does Elisa stand for? And you know that ELISA is enzyme linked 
immunosorbent assay, and that would be the answer. See, so that's the question, that's the answer. That's a basic card. So I'm gonna add it to the deck here, click on add. That's how you add a basic card. Another type of card you can add is called close, this one. Uh, in your thing, you won't have as many different options. You'll probably just have um, close and basic. I have all of these other options because I've added decks that were pre-made. So then you just choose the close um, one. And this is basically, we'll do the same thing. So what does Elisa stand for? Oops. And instead of putting, there's, do you see how there's no front and back? It's just text and extra because the actual back of the flashcard will be here. So you will, you click on shift command C that will put a C1 like that. And then you put like, it's an enzyme linked immunosorbent assay. That was an, that is what an ELISA is. So that will actually, I'll show you what this does to the card later, but that is how you can add a close a type card. So we can add that one. Another thing we can do with the close, let's say you your, um, your question is, what are the most common symptoms of COVID? And you know that the common symptoms of COVID are a fever, a new continuous cough, and a loss of taste and smell okay so these are and you actually when you're when you're going to be reviewing your cards you're kind of like oh i want to give myself a little heads up so i know that this answer here will has con um contains four different aspects so there's the fever there's the new continuous cost there's a loss of taste and a loss of smell and i want to tell myself that there are four things to be to answer so you can actually click colon colon and then write four and then i'll show you what it does now so this is how you've added um, cards. So now let's go back on how to make a card deck and look what this actually does. So here, what does an ELISA stand for? That's the front of the card. If you click on the space bar, the back of the card would say it's an enzyme linked immunosorbent assay. And then you can just click on number three uh, because this um, again is one, good is two and um, easy is three. That's like a shortcut on the um, keyboard. So you can either, you know, shortcut key is three. So you can click on three if that was easy, okay? Then the close is actually the same thing, but instead of having a front and a back, what was written, you know, in that little um, weird bracket and then C1 colon colon is actually now put into parenthesis. I mean, um, these ones, not they're not brackets, mm, the weird brackets with then three point three um, suspension, suspension dots. And then you click there and then you have the answer here in blue again. So that's how you would do it. And then for here, instead of having three dots, since you added colon, colon, you have a number four. So that gives you an indication, oh, there are four things to be looking at. So there are the loss of sense, of the loss of taste, smell, new continuous cough and fever. These are the four things to look for. So that's how you add a card, okay? Now, let's say you wanna look through the statistics of this deck. You would look at stats here and that will bring you to a lot of different information. So this will tell you how many cards you've studied today in this particular deck. So let's say you wanna figure out how much you're working, how long a deck takes you to get through every day, you can look at that. It tells you that you studied two cards today in 49 seconds. Um, the again count was zero because all the cards were quite easy. The learn was uh, two and the review was zero, relearn was zero, no, no, no. These are kind of like uh, stuff that you don't really need to understand now, but basically it tells you that the again count, how many cards you've uh, clicked on again were zero and how many cards you're actually now learning because you've clicked on see them again in three days is two. But since you haven't reviewed any cards yet, you would have to review the cards in three days because you put both cards for three days later, the review card is still on zero. And then once you've reviewed a card and you've actually reviewed it again, uh, that would be put on relearn. Okay, so then here it also tells you, like it gives you over the past month, how much you've actually, uh, today, how much you've actually studied. So one card due, uh, and then in four days, you will have another card due, etc. That gives you that, it also gives you a calendar, tells you the amount of reviews and how long it will take them. The mo I'm kind of just showing you here the important things. Here, at least the important things for me. Here it tells you how, mo how long you will need to take to actually study this whole deck fully. And it tells you that you're one out of 31 days. So you're 3% into studying and this deck fully. And here you have a pie chart again, telling you the young cards that you have. So the ones that you've just learned um, and the new cards again, review intervals, card ease, all of that. 
um, you can uh, look more into it. But for me right now, it's not something that I spend that much time into doing. If that's something you're interested in, you can look at it a bit more. But I usually just look at this, look at how many days I still have to study roughly, the average I study per day, uh, and how much I like this. I quite like looking at that. So yeah, this is basically how you use Anki, um, how you add an Anki card, how you do an Anki deck, etc. Now let's move on to the next question, which is how do you save your work on Anki? And first of all, Anki is a very smart software. So every time, you know, I'm just going to close all of this, sorry. So you can sync here. When you sync, it actually syncs it, all your information. I think it all sends it to the Anki web and sends everything you've done to the Anki cloud. I think that's what it does. So you just click on sync and this will appear and that's what it does. Another thing that's really good with Anki is that every time you close the app, so you click on here, it will sync for you. So it's not something that you have to think about all the time. However, I didn't know that backups existed with Anki and I had a massive, massive stress moment when I was in exam season because I don't know what there was a syncing issue between the different devices I use Anki on I'll talk about this a bit more later and I just lost two or three of my massive decks that I'd spent a lot of time creating and learning and it was just so stressful and I didn't know what to do but Anki is so smart and on the I think the options there was a backups and my backup count is 50. So what you what happens here is that every time you click on sync it actually um creates a backup for you in a, a computer file on your computer and there's 50 of them that are always kept um, all the time and so if you ever have a problem and you just lost all of your information you can actually import all of that backup back into your Anki and then that will actually bring it back to what it was before there was the problem. I remember that I watched a video from the Anking to know how to use that, so I'll leave that below. But it's a very, very simple process. And just what I'm trying to say today is that you need to know that this exists so that if you ever have a problem, uh, if you're ever stressed that you lost all of your information, it's quite easy to retrieve all of that because you have that many backups um, done. So that is very, very important. Um, but yeah, Anki syncs and saves and all of that good stuff. So now I save every time I have a new work session. So I save before. I start doing Anki so I have like a backup of what it was before I started so if anything goes wrong while I'm doing it I have it when I started and after so I can update all I've worked through um, that session. Next question which is, uh, we're, we're nearing the end guys don't worry now, is is this software only for computers and the answer to this is no. There are mobile versions of Anki. For Android it is free but for iOS it is quite expensive, 25 um, not pounds US dollars to have the mobile app on your phone. I kind of, it took me a while to decide if I wanted it or not, but in the end I did decide to buy it and it was quite useful because it means I can also have all of your cards synced to your Anki mobile, so on your phone and on your computer. So you, when you're at home, you can use your computer to do all of your Anki, but then let's say if you're in bed, if you're walking around, if you're on the bus, you can still um, study and still get through all of those Anki cards a day on your phone. So I feel that that's quite useful um, yeah, I quite like having both of them. And the next question I think that kind of leads on to that is how do you actually use Anki on multiple devices? Because since there's this whole syncing feature and I was kind of had an issue with that syncing because it deleted all of my things. So I think the most important thing is like, let's say I'm using my computer and my phone um, to do Anki. And I started revising on um, my computer that morning. So I sync when I start, okay? I do my review, na 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 na, I work, I work, I work, I work, okay, it's done. Now I sync again, okay? Then let's say two hours later, I'm like, oh, I'm in the bus, what can I do? Let's do some anatomy because I have so much anatomy to do. Then you go on your computer, on your mobile phone, you sync again. Um, you sync while starting. So that will actually bring all of the information that you that you done that day on your phone, on, on your computer, sorry, and it will sync it to your phone. So now your computer and your phone have the exact same information. Then you go through your review session on, 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 on anatomy and you sync again at the end of your, at the end um, of your session on your phone. And then if later on that day you go back home and you want to do it again on your computer, you sync again on your computer by while, when you start. So then it'll bring everything you've done on your phone and sync it with your computer so everything is always the same. Don't like uh, sync on your computer, forget to sync after you finish the review session and then go on your phone and then sync there when you're starting because that will create, yeah. And that's basically what happened to me. Um, 
yeah, and then I lost all of my information. But because Anki sinks, I didn't lose it really. But you know, yeah, you get what I mean. And then the last question, we're finally at the end, is if you want to have more information, where can you find more information about Anki? And I feel that I've kind of talked about this uh, not a lot, but a few times again in the video. There is the Anking YouTube channel, that's quite good. I'm sure you can find really good websites online that will uh, help you with information because all of this basically was self-taught. I learned everything on my own and I'm now trying to explain through my experience what I now know to you um, if you are guys with beginners and try start just starting off with Anki. I still have a lot to learn and I'm going to use the same resources that I'm actually recommending to you to learn these things. So yeah, the Anking YouTube channel uh, is uh, probably the best one and that's usually the one I look at or just some websites online and just on YouTube, just generally, if I have a question, I just type it on there and there will always be, or more often than not, will be a person that will be there to be like, hey girl, this is how you do it. So yeah, I'm done. I've spoken so much, I'm so warm, but I'm done. I hope that this was useful. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to like my video, subscribe to my channel, and share this video with other people that could benefit from it as well. If you have any questions, there's the comment section, um, down below or you can also contact me through my dms on instagram at differently moi and yeah i think i'm now fully done yeah thank you very much for watching guys i will see you guys next